Hello everyone, in this lecture we would like to talk about VI Editor. I have already uh, copied this .bash RC from the home directory of this user and I would like to manipulate that file. This is a file containing some script that uh, whenever you start your shell interactively, these scripts will be executed. Regardless of what bash or C file is, we would like to open this file in VI. You always type VI and then the file name that you would like to edit and press enter. When you start VI, you are started in command mode. This is the first mode that VI editor starts. We have command mode and we have input mode. Command mode is a mode that you can issue some commands in it and do some stuff on the text. The input mode is a mode that you can simply type. For example, right now if I type L, nothing happens. But if I type I, see, down there I got insert mode with the command I and I can keep typing, for example. If I press escape, I get out from the input mode and I go to command mode again. Switching from command mode into input mode can be done via the following character. Let me bring the cursor at the beginning of this line. Or let's go, for example, uh, on this if. I am at the moment on the character I. If I press A on my keyboard, see, it went to insert mode and my cursor went in front of I. I press escape to go to command mode again. If I press A, it is append and it goes after the character that I have chosen and gets ready to be typed in like this, see? And if I press I, it stays there. And if I type something, it will be typed behind the chosen character. Assuming that I am anywhere on this line, if I press O, like lowercase O, it goes to the next line and insert mode. So I can start typing. And doing the same, uh, pressing Shift and O, of course, now I'm still in input mode. I press Escape. Now I press Shift O, see? It went one line above and went to insert mode. So these are the way that you can go into insert mode. There is one more way of opening input mode and that's reading another file from the present uh, working directory, for example, and inserting it here. For example, I go back to command mode uh, by pressing column like this and then R and the file. For example, I have a file uh, like file.txt and if I insert see test1 is written from that file and it's being inserted into this file to make sure that we got this test1 from that file I can press escape again and colon and type s8 which stands for shell and enter I go back to shell where my vi editor is still running and whatever i have inserted as text into that file is still in buffer is not still safe if i get like uh, ps minus aux somewhere here we can find our vi is being running and the file that we are manipulating is shown here so it is running and we are in the shell we wanted to make sure that we uh, read that file from the correct file let's say for example this is just test we just wanted to make sure that we got the right input from the right file and if i go back to y by pressing ctrl d i go back to the file that i was editing and the content has been inserted properly so these are command mode versus input mode in terms of file management commands let me press escape uh, to make sure that we are in command mode if you press colon again when you want to insert a command one way of doing it is like pressing colon and type something the other way is just pressing a key or key combination on keyboard which is already defined as a command here in vi right now i just pressed colon and i press w and if I press enter, everything that I have added to this file will be uh, written from buffer into the file. It will be saved. And let me do that. So the file has been written with the new input. And to quit the uh, VI editor, you press colon again and you press Q. It will quit. Okay. So if we uh, type like PSAUX, we don't have VI running anywhere anymore. 
and if we cat this file our changes should be there if we go up these are the yeah dummy changes that we made to the file let me go back to vi editor and press i to be in insert mode and uh, I can, for example, keep typing again. One way of saving and quitting at the same time, you can combine it like colon and then W and Q all together. So it will save and quit afterwards. And this is a typical thing that developers as well as Linux engineers typically do. Uh, let's go back to the file. So let me append by pressing A, uh, some text here. And let's say we edit different places of the file and at some point we are not sure that we would like to save this file what we can do is pressing escape going to command mode pressing q and exclamation mark it means quit and do not save if i press go back my changes are gone because i said q and exclamation mark so i quit without saving since it's very important, uh, let me repeat it again. If you are in the file doing some stuff, you can press escape, colon, sh to go back to the shell. It happens a lot that you would like to check something and go back to the file by pressing control D. It's very important and it's very useful. So this was a little bit about file management. Next one is window motion. Now we are at the beginning of this file, okay? Assuming this is like thousand lines, uh, you would like to check or you would like to append something at the very end. Uh, it doesn't make sense to going down like this. Uh, you can simply press Shift plus G to go to the last line. G stands for go, okay? Uppercase G goes to the last line. And if you want to scroll up and down, you can press Control D to go down or control U to go up. Now I'm pressing control U just to go up and control D back, it just scrolls down. Let me go up by control U. Let's assume that we would like to search for something. For example, if I press uh, shift G, it's just candidate a word. Let's get this completion. I go up again and let's assume that you would like to search for that. Press again, colon slash and then completion press enter it finds the first line where completion is there see here we do have completion if you would like to jump to the next one you just simply press n and once more see I, i'm just pressing n not uppercase or uh, and not with control simply n and it finds every instance of completion in this file i guess there is one more here and that's yeah we hit the bottom and if I press in again it goes uh, from the top of the file and uh, searches all over again so this is also searching it's very useful and it's very important to know I repeat it again colon and then slash then start typing like n it goes to the words sometimes you would like to go to a specific line before I do that let me press escape we are still in search mode we can say set numbers uh, sorry not numbers but just number what the editor did is just adding some numbers and they won't be calculated as part of the content okay uh, we would like to go for example to the line let's say 50 i hope we have a 50 to do that you can type for example 50 look down here we have the number 50 simply type sh press shift g oh we are still in this uh, set number now i type 50 See the 50 is appeared here and then shift G. It goes to the line 50. This is also important sometimes if you know the line number, you can actually uh, jump to that number. Typically the use case would be that you get an error on your shell and it, the error says that there is an error in line number, for example, 200 in this configuration file. You just open it with Y. Well, all, all you have to do is that you make sure that you are in command mode. As mentioned, when you enter VI, you are in command mode. All you have to do is just typing the number and then Shift G. It goes to that number. Sometimes you would like to just uh, move between words, okay? Make sure that you are in command mode. And if you press W, you jump to the beginning of each word, okay? This is also handy. And of course, if you press B, it would go backwards, but word to word. 
to go to the beginning of the line you just press shift carrot it goes to the beginning of the line and a dollar sign like shift four goes to the end i would not mention other stuff there are much more but at some point if you get filled with too much shortcuts you know you forget that what i do is i try to memorize the most important ones that in my opinion i'm telling you them right now and the rest can always be checked if they are needed by time you can check them and learn them but at the beginning these commands that i'm telling you are the most important ones and there are a lot of use cases for them let me go to the beginning of the file i'm in command mode if i press dd the whole line will get deleted but it will go to the buffer it means kind of it's like cut right you cut it if you repeat that with the other line the previous one will be gone and this one will be in the buffer if you do that mistakenly all you have to do is like pressing Control u just to put it back that was cut command for copy for example you would like to copy the whole line and you don't want to cut it you want this line to be here you just want to copy that you just press two times y it is copied you go somewhere else and press p just to paste it and for example modify it according to this line this is also let's say rearrangement commands finally i would like to talk about let's say find and replace with regular expression capabilities for example we have a document and we would like to change any word like bash to let's say zsh this is just a dummy file we are fine doing it so you are in command mode colon percent s slash yeah it's working percentage s slash bash so it found it we want to replace this guy with zsh we close it and we want that for the whole document so let's check uh, see everything has been changed to zsh and if we search for uh, bash nothing in it okay there is no bash in this document so with this we are fine we can uh, save and quit that was a little introduction and basics about vi vi is also very very powerful uh, i really encourage you to download if you find some free pdfs on uh, online there are a lot and you can download them or if you would like you can buy some books about them the importance of vi is that it is there on any Unix-like operating system, let's say 99% of the times. And uh, chances are high that you go to like an IoT device or whatever machine or appliance which has any kind of Unix or Linux operating system on it and you would like to uh, edit something on it, the Y is 99% of the times installed on it there you don't have notepad plus plus or vs code or sublime and, and stuff like that right there you are stuck with vi and you have to be able to work perfectly in it okay so with this i close this lecture thanks for watching catch you in the next one bye